what, what the lady's is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? There's a guy by the name of Linus Phillip who was only 30 years old when the police stopped him at a gas station and gunned him down in cold blood. Why did they stop him? They said they stopped him for tinted windows. They said the windows were tinted too dark. But how does that result in a murder? Now, Linus Phillip didn't die on the scene. He died at the hospital. Uh, this is according to Largo police. They said that Linus was shot when he tried to flee from officers in his car. They said he was dragging Steiner, Officer Steiner, who was halfway in and halfway out of the vehicle. According to Largo police, Steiner and Officer Abels were on patrol around 5.55 p.m. They said they noticed a Nissan Altima with illegally tinted windows. They spoke with Linus Phillip, the driver, at the gas station, and one witness described the conversation as polite on the part of the officers. While standing near Linus's car, the officers said they smelled the odor of marijuana coming from the vehicle. As they tried to detain Linus, he jumped into his driver's seat and tried to flee. Abel's managed to move out of the way but the other officer, Steiner, was trapped halfway in and halfway out of the car, being dragged, fearing for his life. He drew his weapon and popped up Linus Phillip. Makes absolutely no sense. But that's their story, and they're sticking with it. But that's not the coldest that's a bad, that's, that, that's pretty cold to take a life like that. But check this out. After they killed him, these nut jobs had the audacity to go to the funeral home and use his finger to try to unlock his phone. They went to a cold storage at the morgue and held up his finger, put his finger on the phone to try to unlock it. This while his family was visiting the funeral home. This is cold blooded, man. These bastards would stop at nothing. I mean, they have absolutely no shame. I mean, they are capable of anything. Man, these stories, man, they, they come in so often, man, it just makes your head spin. A rental car at that, y'all. The car was rented. Don't that sound suspicious to you? When's the last time you known a car that was rented to have windows, window tent that was illegal? Something's fishy, y'all. Unless, of course, that rental car was some type of privately owned company and they had some type of, uh, you know, different requirements. But that, uh, it just don't make sense. But even if it was a rental car, that's besides the point. A guy gets stopped for window tent that's too dark and he ends up dead. He got stopped for window tent. This is the police, y'all. This is the police overreach. These dudes have decided that being a cop just ain't enough. They want to be the judge, the jury, the prosecutor, and the executor. That's the way they're getting down. Black folks, you own your own. You own your own. Nothing is going to stop these dudes until violence is returned. And it has to be consistent. 
It's not going to be a situation where somebody got violent and they came in with the tactical unit, boo boo boo, took them out real quick. It's got to happen like crime is already happening. You know, the way crimes, violent crimes are not isolated incidents around America. That's the way it's got to be before they decide, you know what? We got to stop this. We, we, we got to, maybe we're, we're doing something wrong here. Because see, as long as they're not being penalized, they're not paying for their crimes, they have no incentive to stop. They have no incentive to treat people with respect and dignity and decency if they're not going to be penalized for their misconduct. And the only thing, unfortunately, that people in America understand it's money and blood. That's it. I ain't advocating that you go out and start popping up cops. I'm just saying this is the law of averages. At some point, people are going to say, man, you know what? We tried everything else. We tried to get along. We tried to do the right thing. We tried to comply. Every kind of way you can think of, the police can kill a black person. People have been killed. Non-compliant, compliant, super compliant, ultra compliant, like unarmed, 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 mainly. You know, they just, they somehow don't have critical thinking skills and they don't know how to de-escalate situations when black people are involved. When they see black people, it's like, oh yeah, this is my excuse. I can turn up now. I can take it to another level now. Like they come on the scene just busting heads, kicking, hitting, shooting, being disrespectful. And the only way that I can see anything changing is if they start getting the taste of their own medicine. And that's unfortunate. But that's the way America works. You can have an intersection where a thousand crashes happen, a thousand accidents. As soon as somebody gets killed, they want to put up a stop sign. They want to put up a signal light. As long as there's accidents, no harm, no foul, right? The minute somebody get killed, they got, a, they got a stop sign or a signal light up the very next day. And it's like the cops who are doing all of this killing, they're doing all this disrespect, they are to blame every time a cop gets killed because cop, cops kill, so they say, out of fear. Civilians kill out of retaliation. Civilians kill out of vengeance. They kill cops out of vengeance, out of retaliation. And it's those cops that are out here indiscriminately just killing people for any little old reason, disrespecting people, pushing people around, bullying people, brutalizing people, that's going to get those innocent cops killed or those maybe not so innocent cops killed. They are going to be to the blame. They're going to try to say somebody else to blame, but this is the hate that hate produced. They have created this atmosphere. They have created the anti- cop atmosphere. People don't want to just automatically go around hating cops. People want to feel safe. People want to feel protected. But they don't feel safe and they don't feel protected under this current system. Under this current tyrannous system. They don't feel safe. And the police has created this culture. They did this all by themselves. These officers can put his own life in jeopardy. You know, they say, well, I feared for my life. The dude said, the cop said that they grabbed, one of the cops grabbed the car and was holding on and the guy was still driving. This is what they say, of course. They don't have any video evidence, but this is what they say happened. You know they got evidence, right? But they say they don't. Maybe they turned off the, 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 the video because they like to do that when they know they're going to commit a crime. But 
they say the police grabbed the car and the guy was driving and, 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 and so they, you know, he was dragging the cop, you know, all kind of stuff. But anyway, if somebody is driving a car and you stick your damn hand in the window or you try to jump on the car and you getting drugged, that ain't that person's fault. That's your damn fault. So how are you going to say you feared for your life? No, you was Billy Badass trying to be a hero, jumping on the car. You didn't fear for your life. Because if you feared for your life, you'd get, you'd get the hell out of the way. But you're injecting yourself into the line of danger. You're injecting yourself into that. And then you kill somebody and then say you feared for your life. Man, that's game. I recognize it. And most people watching this video recognize it. The rest of y'all are in denial. These dudes, nothing is going to stop them until they get a taste of their own medicine. That's just the way it is. This is the law of averages. It cannot continue to go this way. You know, how they say that they fear for their lives. They don't fear for their lives right now. But at some point they will. This game, when they say they fear for their lives, this is what they say to get the pass. There are no legal requirements for cops to use sound judgment, restraint, or have respect for human life. So this is what you get. And here's another thing to think about. If the police can go to a morgue, walk inside of a cold room, and use a dead man's finger to try to unlock his phone, which those attempts were unsuccessful. Why didn't they just get him to sign a confession? No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Yeah.